It's day three at SHOT Show 2018. I'm Steve Ostrom here in the Brownells booth, and with me, I have Matt with the Kneeling Made Perfect. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Steve. Welcome aboard. Oh, it's been a fantastic show so far. Um, really keen to actually uh, show you what we have here. We got this. This is an amazing machine. I, I'd like yeah. to go through the whole thing. So, I think we should start off with what is a kneeling, right? A kneeling is a mystery to a lot of people that I've spoken to. Okay, so essentially, annealing is a form of heat treating. We're trying to get a metal to a desired hardness mm -hmm. using heat. So often, when you work hard in metal by working it back and forth, like a paper clip, if you bend it long enough, right. it'll eventually break. Right. Now you can stop it from being hard and brittle by heating it up, to, and it will essentially change the microstructure of the brass, in this case it's brass, sure. to a desired hardness. Now, normally when you anneal stuff, you put it in a heat treating oven for a long time at a certain temperature right. and the whole mass of the alloy or metal that you're trying to heat treat will be the same hardness. What's different with annealing cartridges or cases is we're trying to keep the head hard Correct. where it matters, the body hard. We don't want to compromise the integrity here, but we're trying to keep the shoulder and neck area soft enough and consistent enough when you're gripping the bullet so that you get nice neck tension and good release. Right. Without having this over work harden and crack eventually. Uh, I understand. I yeah. understand. So, there are a few ways that annealing is accomplished already. I've done it with a hand torch, but it's yeah. less than perfect results. So, you've got hand torches, you've got uh, machines that have uh, the, the propane torch. Right, so have two yeah. a carousel. And yeah, so normally with those machines, you're using uh, temperature sensitive pastes. Uh, you apply that to the inside of the neck of the, of the case and essentially when the brass gets to that desired temperature that mel it melts the tempelac and then you go right that one's right. done. The problem is when you're trying to anneal stuff fast you need more energy and more heat to do it in a short amount of time. Where people seem to get this, people seem to have this idea that 750 degrees is actually the right temperature but that depends on the time. I've, I've had heard a range of temperatures. When you try to look it up or you Google it or something, you get anywhere from 500 to 750 to 800. Yeah. People are all over the road. So what no one has really done is find out the temperature time relationship for annealing. It's always been that is the temperature and however long you take to get there doesn't matter. Well what we've discovered with our research is that it does matter. So we found that temperatures can exceed 900, for example, if you're in the five second zone. Uh -huh. And how much mass are you trying to heat up? So for example, if you've got a small cartridge and you have a fixed power source, like a, a flame or say another induction annealer, which uh, is a, a fixed power source and you can only control the time. Okay. So if you've got a, say a 2 to 3 quite small mass, that'll heat up to a desired temperature a lot faster than say a 338. La poor. There's a little more to this than I thought. So, you know, uh, I've seen guys who have uh, two to threes at two seconds to anneal it, but then they have a three through eight, it might be five seconds, but sure. they're trying to shoot for the same temperature, right? Yeah. What we know is the temperature changes. Okay. okay. So, what we do differently is rather than try and aim for a temperature, which can be all over the place depending on the time, we actually go for the hardness. Okay. So, we actually have a lab. It's got a Micro Vickers hardness machine. Wow. And uh, we actually go ahead and take the brass, measure it for the hardness before. So often, if you have a case which has been shot and resized, it'll be quite hard, even after one reload, if it's virgin brass, brand new. So after one reload, it'll actually be something where around about the 150s. We've seen cases in the 200 Vickers that have been repeatedly fired. So you can actually analyze the metallurgy, which is something we can't do, you know. Yeah, so At home, you can't do that. Uh, so what we do is we have a, a Micro Vickers hardness testing machine and we also have access to a lot of outsourced you know, contractor based uh, metallurgy labs which are quite local to us. So if really? we ever need to get some real hardcore stuff done, we just send it to them. They can do the cross-sectional oh. stuff, give us an independent uh, cross-check if you will. Well, no wonder you know so much about this. Well, we're always learning. Yeah. But... So uh, in fact, it's been the customers who have given us the insight as to what is really desired with annealing. We've given them a tool, they've come back and said, actually, you want to maybe try this and that. So we're quite flexible and open-minded with it. Uh, 
So essentially, we take the case, we measure it with our microfocus hardness machine. Essentially, it's just a little tiny indenter, which is in the shape of a diamond. Oh, okay. It'll put a little imprint in there, and under the microscope, we measure the size of it. So the bigger it is, right. the softer the, oh, the metal. Yeah, they've got hardness tested testers like that for different metals, like for lead bullets, they've got yeah. one. And, and so it's important that it's microvickers because what we've got here is a very thin wall, very thin neck wall. If you're trying to use Rockwell or something similar, the uh, load is yeah. higher. And so what you end up doing is piercing the, the brass case here and going into your mandrel, which, and then you're actually right. artificially reading the mandrel and not the case. So you need a light load, which is why it's called micro vickers. Okay. We're talking like grams instead of kgs oh, or okay. pounds, okay. if you will. But tailor-made for this type of work? Uh, for very thin samples. Yeah. So not normally cartridge cases, but anything that's thin. Okay. So essentially we take the case, we measure it after we've annealed it to see what the hardness is doing. And what we know is factory brass out of the box is a certain hardness. And we've tried to replicate that as best as we can. And our research has shown that, because uh, we, what we've done is we've taken these and we've loaded them up, fired them, loaded them up, fired them, and seen how the hardness for a given annealing, uh, for a given hardness that we get after annealing, uh, how that essentially changes each shot. And okay. what we're trying to do is get consistency. So we found that, say, for example, some manufacturers have a, a, a case hardness around the neck and shoulder of about 120 thickers. Mm -hmm. Uh, compared to say a shot case which might be 150 to 170. And we've say got right, 120 Vickers, let's just see if we can repeat that, what happens to it as we reload. And we found that you know the, the harder it is, it tends to creep up in hardness, no matter, even if you have the same setting, it'll creep up. So what we've done is we've taken that down, okay what happens if we go down to say 110, try it again, still creep. And we found that 105 to 100, 105 to 95 in that zone, is pretty much a pretty acceptable level of hardness that guarantees if you can maintain that setting each time you uh, reload right. and anneal, it'll keep that hardness. And that's the consistency that we're trying to get. So every reload oh. is the same hardness, the same neck tension. Oh, for yeah. long range, that would be great. Yeah, so basically the problem for long range guys is if they try, they, they might have the perfect load, mm -hmm. they've, uh, they've batch sorted their cases, they've done all this prep on them they might have done the you know the primer pocket the flash hole they might have done some neck turning sure. obviously you know chamfering that kind of stuff so they've really put a lot of work into their brass and then they go ahead and load it and shoot it and finding that their velocities are increasing ever so slightly with every shot because they do. neck tension is gradually increasing, increasing yeah. yeah okay so I can actually show you our machine here now so what we do is we take the brass from customers around the world we measure it for them and we publish it on our settings page. Okay. And we have a range of programs, which uh, I can show you here. So you can see there's program 93, for example. Right now the machine has 125 programs, which are preloaded into the machine. Right. Now the programs are not actually specific to a cartridge as such, but they're just levels of intensity that the machine can offer. Sure. And what we do is we say, this is your brand, this is your case you sent to us to get analyzed. We will say, right, in our lab we will measure it first, we will try a low setting, measure it again, oh, not quite enough, then we'll gradually work up and say, okay, you need program 74, for example, okay. for this case, and then we'll publish that. Would there be like one program for all Winchester brass, for example? Uh, no, basically, if you've got, say, a 308 mm -hmm. Winchester, yep. there may be lot numbers in there, which may change that. Oh my gosh. So it gets very, I mean, even neck turning oh makes gosh. a difference, right? So we've gotten pretty in depth. Uh, basically, if it's not on the list, you can send it to us. We will test it for free. Uh, basically, you just pay the shipping costs. It'll be completely free of charge, and we'll mail you back the setting. OK, so now, no matter what the case, yeah. it can be perfected. Can and at any stage, you can send us samples for free, and we'll test them. Okay. We do require a minimum of six. And unfortunately, the tests that we perform are destructive. And so we can't send them back, yeah. unfortunately. Um, that's, that's small potatoes there, that doesn't yeah. matter. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are also quite excited about our auto feeder, which obviously is not here, yes, right? Yes, the auto feeder. Right, so I've got that down here. Oh, wow. Right, so I can't actually run it on this machine. It hasn't got the uh, auto feeder software on here, but I'll talk about what is on here okay. later. So this is basically the prototype. Uh, we've completed the uh, molds 
So very soon after we get back from the show, uh, this will be available. We're uh, just waiting on the circuit board. Uh, as you see it here, is how you will get it out of the box. So there's no assembly required. And essentially that just sits on there like so. So there's no need to assemble anything. Uh, the only tools required are an Allen key to, an Allen wrench to change the uh, shell holder there. Okay. Yep. And to lock it in place in the back. It's easy enough. Yeah. So essentially, uh, what comes with it is you'll get three of these uh, shell guides, right. and they have a, uh, a, a variation in the diameter of the uh, feeding tube here. So this one here is designed for 308. Okay. And what you're trying to do here is have the smallest possible, you know, diameter for the shell you're trying to do. Sure. And a lot of guys with progressive presses, for example, with auto feeders, they would be familiar with this concept anyway. Yeah, this would not be anything... This level of adjustment, I mean, yeah. it's pretty easy. You just uh, insert the, uh, the guide here, which is just two little thumb screws. Fast just get that out. out. Just get that out of the way. You take your case, and I'll just raise that up. Stick that in there, and now essentially lower that until you're just touching the top of the uh, channel or just above it actually okay and that allows the case to so you got just the right amount of clearance for that particular yeah so that case that doesn't I'll just rotate this here so that allows the case to travel forward and back okay okay yeah and then do you set this up with some kind of popper or something? Yeah, so we've designed it to uh, take a Dillon or a Hornady. Essentially, you just make a stand up and it will uh, make to it basically any... Uh, oh, the Hornady case feeder, that, that tube? Yeah, the, the yeah. hopper thing. Yeah, yeah I've so got one of those. Yeah. You, you also get two of these tubes and they sit in there. And all you need to do is line up your hopper with that tube. Uh, however you do that is up to you. Right. A lot of guys already have hoppers, so uh, we've decided, well, that is their department, they can do that. You'll get basically the mechanism that uh, will do the job for you. Okay. This will do one case in about 10 seconds, the whole cycle. So from when it uh, gets to the loading ramp to in, annealed and out is roughly 10 seconds. Okay. So you can work out how many you can do an hour. So was this a result of customer feedback? And yeah, so when we initially designed the machine, it was hand operated. So if I take that off, what we have here is a shell holder this, this comes with the machine, basically. You've got your normal shell holder. Right. So you take that out of your press, and uh, this comes with the machine. It's a little grip. You essentially put that in there. It has to have a tang on there. So into the grip. And uh, now you can hand operate the machine. So your case goes in. You've got your right program selected. And then you press the start button. And then okay. you're taking the hot one out, putting it into a tray, and so on. And it's quite fast because it's induction. Yeah, so it'll take roughly three to four seconds to anneal a case. And, uh, you know, it's actually faster with the hand than it is with the auto feeder because the human hand is quite efficient. Some guys actually get two of these and they'll have one in there and while it's loading, they'll get the second one ready and then they'll go out and boom, you know, so they're, they're kind of doing this business and you get pretty fast. Well, when they brought our, our first sample in to look at this, um, the, the guy that brought it in, I asked him, you know, why do I want one of these? How long does it take to cycle? And he said, a couple of seconds. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, that's different. Yeah, so that's okay if you've got, say, 200 or less cartridges to do. In fact, most of our guys sort of operate in that range. But, you know, we've met guys this week at SHOT Show who are like, well, I've got 20,000. Now, that, that's <laughs> something I want to ask. A quantity reloader set up, you know, with the, with the Dillon or the Hornady hopper, the, the case feeder, the automatic feed, why would you want to anneal so many cases? Who, what kind of shooter does that? Um, basically, anyone who has gas guns, you know, guys who shoot a lot of semi-automatic stuff. Right. Uh, really, uh, you know, we're from New Zealand. We don't really have that kind of um, exposure to those okay. kind of people. So we thought it was quite amazing when we heard those numbers personally. So this thing uh, is designed to uh, allow those guys to essentially go hands-free. And Are they doing it for consistent accuracy? Or are they doing it for brass life? Well, you, or, by default, you kind of get both. Yeah. Uh, but I'd say it's economy. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, essentially. Well, uh, especially if you're shooting a caliber where you're buying Lapua brass or something, or normal true. brass, you know, it's quite expensive over here. Well, just speaking of uh, quality brass, good annealing starts with good brass. True. So this true. machine, and I'd say no machine, can give you good 
annealing results if your brass is bad. Okay. So you know, if Fair you've enough. got range pickups, if you've got a whole, like let's just say it's all two to three. Yeah. If you've got this brand, that brand, you know, this, that, and the other. Sounds and, like my reloading yeah, fail. Then yeah. if you want to get quality annealing, it doesn't matter what machine you use, mm -hmm. it'll be terrible. You'll get some right, some high, some low, because the brass is varying. What's varying is the mass in the shoulder and the neck. And essentially, if that's varying, there's no annealing method that'll solve that if you try to do one setup and then you know, raying it. So it's really important to have quality brass to start with. Sure. So most of our guys understand that. Well, especially if you're shooting a caliber where the brass is like two bucks a piece, mm. like 338 Lapua or something, you know. Right. One thing I should also mention here, we've put a lot of effort into this machine to make it safe. Uh, these, by the way, are the pilots that come with the machine. Okay. And these are family specific, so this will do all your 308s. This is Pilot 11, you know, we've got pilots for 223. Uh, we used to include them in the price of the machine when we first shipped them out ourselves, but no longer do that as we've got distributors now. Okay. Um, but these are, you know, a pretty nice way just to keep right. the, because what we're trying to do is keep the neck and shoulder in a consistent height in the air gap. But uh, as I was saying, we put a lot of effort into this machine to make it safe. You know, one thing about induction is it's high frequency RF and it radiates a lot of bad stuff. So we've actually got our FCC approval on this. Oh. It's been completely safety checked. This thing's on right now. I can put my finger in the air gap here and there's nothing, nothing happens. There's nothing I can possibly okay. touch which is gonna uh, you know, upset Good. someone. And then when you're actually kneeling a brass, you're nowhere near anything hot. The only thing that gets hot is the case. The machine will right. warm up. Yeah. You know, it'll be after say 200 rounds of 308, you'll start to feel it gets pretty warm. Right. And it's air cooled, so there's no water cooling that you need to worry about. Okay. Uh, and it's just a passive air cooled system, so we, ha we have tried our bit. That's why it doesn't have like a through hole system, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of machines you've probably seen, the case goes in, gets a needle, drops out the bottom or whatever. Um, we decided that wasn't going to work for safety reasons. Okay. So we designed it, we went down that road a long time ago and uh, haven't really looked back. And that's hence why we have the uh, hand operation. So what I want to show you now is our new software that we've developed. All right. So I spoke before about how we get the settings. Yeah. Customers send us samples, we yeah. test them. Goes in our website. The list is constantly growing. Yep. So you know, anyone who buys the standard machine, or the machine as it is now, they can go online, see all that data, and you know, to their benefit. But what if you can't send us brass, don't want to, you've only got say 100 rounds, you don't want to sacrifice six. Sure. So what we've done here is we've made some software that works alongside the standard software of the machine. So you can still use this with the standard programs and it's called Aztec mode. Aztec mode. Okay. Right, so what we've done, I'm just gonna go back here, screen, right? So what Aztec mode does, it allows the user to take any brass that they have, say you've bought a brand new box of um, La Pua 308, okay. and let's just say, because we've done a lot of it, but the lot numbers change all the time, and we found the lot numbers are quite you know, specific to what setting you need. And so we have guys sending us stuff okay. all the time like that. So let's just say you've got a whole box of La Pua 308 and you want to anneal it and the setting's not on our site. So what do you do? The machine will now tell you the setting with one sacrificial case. So you sacrifice oh. one case, okay. the machine will spit out a code and then you can go and anneal. I'm going to show you how that works. So before you begin, we've got a small batch of uh, cases here that we're going to anneal. Right, and this is just some Winchester mm -hmm. 308. Okay. Right, so what you want to do to start off with is take a random sample of that batch. You know, five is a good number, but the more you do, the more sure. you know, finite you'll get. Point. We've got our 11 yeah. pilot in there already. And what we're going to do here is the sort function. Now what this does is it puts a very small pulse across our inductor and it has to penetrate the thickness of this brass. And by doing so, it's basically measuring the mass of the brass in this oh, area, right? Okay. So the neck and shoulder region is measuring the mass. And so what you're trying to do is find out, because you get subtle differences. The more quality the brass, the higher the quality, the less differences there are. So what we're trying to do is pick a case that best represents that batch. 
So All right. the middle of the bell curve, if you will. Okay. So we put our first case in, doesn't matter which one it is, and we press the start button. And what this is doing is getting a datum point, a zero point. So we can see here, that's zero, and we've got a little equalizer here. If I back this out, just to show you how uh, fine-tuned this is, if I back that out just a quarter of a turn there, wait a sec, drop it in, you'll see it goes negative because there's less mass now in the air gap. So there you go, that's negative four. Right. That's only out of the air gap by, say, two thou, and we've got a major difference there. More. So we'll put that back in. We know that's a zero case, so we'll try another one. We'll see where this one is compared to that one. So that's minus two, that's, but it's within an acceptable tolerance. We actually have, uh, we've done a bit of research on this. We've found that anywhere minus two plus two is considered relatively okay based on a zero. So that one's minus two, we're gonna put that there. Try another one. <coughs> So that one's a one, which is right there. So you can see what we're doing here is we're forming this uh, sort of array of you know, how many are consistent. Okay. So there's a two. So this one's right there. So you're trying to find which one's the more common number here. So there's a minus two. So we can do a few more. This brass is obviously... The more you do, the more accuracy you Yeah, get. so you can see the quality of the brass really, uh, you know, we haven't done any prep to this. So prepping the brass does make a huge difference. So there's a one, so that's here. So we can start to see there's more weight towards that side. So we, we, we would want to take a case from this area. The one you use to actually get the uh, result, you know, should be in this zone. There's a zero. Okay, so that's probably enough. So that was obviously a flyer, you know. So I'm gonna take one out of the middle. This is gonna be our sacrificial case. We're gonna get okay. our setting off this one. Okay. So go back. Now we go to our analyze function. <coughs> now I'll put that case in. So that's just a brand new case. Right, All right. And we're doing this so we don't have to send six cases to you in New Zealand. You can still do that if you want. Uh -huh. That service will remain open. Yeah. We will always provide that for free, but this is just a helpful tool. So we're on Analyze, we press Start. Now we've got pilot number 11 in, so we enter that pilot. So there's one, there's one, got 11, press Start. Now we're ready to analyze this. What's gonna happen is it's gonna heat it up until when it melts, just slightly melts. But while it's doing it, okay. it's actually gonna be measuring what's happening to the brass in the air gap with inductance essentially as it doesn't. Right. It's, and it's, it's going to generate a you know, profile. It's like it's scanning it or something. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to do a pulse of heat, then a measurement, then a pulse of heat, then a measurement, okay. and so forth. And it does that in milliseconds. So I'm going to press the start button here. Now it's doing it. it takes about seven or so seconds to do. Seven seconds. That's, Roughly, yeah. That's so that's done now. Really quick. So you see that is pretty much just starting to melt the oh, neck yeah. and a bit in the shoulder there. Yeah. So this is a sacrificial case. That's kind of why we call it Aztec. I understand. <laughs> okay, I understand. Yeah. So we sacrifice the case and uh, that, so you throw that away. That's, you do not want to reload that. Right. Right. And what it's done here is it's given us a four digit code. You can okay. see that. Yeah. yeah. So you want to write that down. Because unlike the, uh, the settings that we have in our standard mode, right. it's not stored in the machine. True. So you want to write okay. it down, you know, your little data book, write it down. Okay. So we'll take this case, and we're going to use that setting. And I haven't changed anything here. All yeah. I've done is, you know, I'm going to press the use button. So I'll put my case in. That, that is a, do you agree, that's a brand new, yes, not a new. brand new Winchester 308 yeah. case. Right, so use. That's the code. Yep. We're ready to run, and just look how fast this is. Now hang on. There we go. Done. Now, you see that? Ooh, that looks like factory brass there. Yeah. yeah, so that's perfectly annealed. We know it's perfectly annealed because we've done the test in the lab to verify it. Uh, so, I mean, it can't get simpler than that. And faster. Yeah, so basically, you, get any faster. so now you can, so that's, uh, I'm gonna put that in there. Now I can just go ahead and start annealing. And this will work for the auto feeder as well, so that one's done. And this is how fast it goes. Pretty much. Yeah, I've got it so this is what sold me on this machine, the speed. 
that one's done. Even before it had the Aztec feature. Oh yeah, so we've just tried to make it better. So that's another one. So you know, you can really crank them out. This is a, this uh, 308 used to take about four seconds to anneal. Now it's taken roughly two. This is this is awfully fast. And then if you had a case feeder on top of this, wow. Yeah. So those are all essentially the same. Those are you all can ready see. to go. So what we did, they're they're pretty good because we took one from the middle of that assortment there. If okay. we took one out of here on that edge, you know, this one here might be slightly different. Sure. Now we're sure. we're, we're dealing with a pretty narrow uh, tolerance here. So when it when I was saying that was a you know a, a plus two and that was a minus two, the reality is. The difference between that one there and that one there, if I did take that one, the higher one, would be minimal. You wouldn't even notice sure. it. The better but the brass, the smaller the difference. Too. Exactly. So let's just uh, go back here and go to the sort function again. Just to give you an idea, if I take that melted case, actually I'll take a new one. So we'll go back into sort mode there and we'll take a new case and put that in and zero it again. Right, so that's zero. And this is that burnt case we did before, okay. but it's the same case. And look at the difference here. Oh, hang on a sec. Got to orient it so it's, uh, yeah, because the burnt, the melted bits are what it, Oh, yeah. that interferes with it. No, you don't really want to measure these anyway, right? No, yeah, probably not. Yeah, see, so there you go. It's a major, it's different now. Wow. Yeah. So, <clears throat> essentially, we've tried to make the machine, it's also quieter, so before, you, when you ran it with the uh, original software, mm -hmm. it was doing like a tick, 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 tick noise, yeah. now there's no noise. Okay. So it's quieter. Yeah, it's and, hard, uh, hard to tell here at shot with all the people around. But oh, you can't hear I anything. haven't heard a thing. Yeah, so uh, that's essentially uh, it. You can just go ahead and do these, so I'm going to get, these are cool enough now, uh, you know, put, put these up here just so you can see the consistency here. I mean, they're all more or less identical. Yes, they are. The, you can see the line goes down to the same level. Yeah, now the line, line, this is a funny thing. We always get this question. So the patina or the, the color change right. is a classic question we get all the time by our customers. How come my brass isn't changing color, right? What we found is if you clean your brass, say an ultrasonic or if you uh, tumble especially, okay. uh, you won't get that. In fact, what that is, is oxidization on the surface layer of the brass they're burning off oh. or any other contaminants that might be on there. Okay. Like, you know, you, you touch it with your fingers, right? So oils in your finger, that's what's burning and causing that color change. Does it matter if you clean the brass first or if you don't clean it? We, funny you say that, we actually used to think that um, especially stainless steel media mm -hmm. was a problem because uh, our initial testing uh, showed that stainless steel tumbling increased the hardness. I read that on your website. Yeah, so oh, that surprised me. Because of the way we do things in the lab, we don't destroy the, the case in testing. So we don't do the cross-sectional stuff that's outside. Yeah. We get that done professionally. Yeah. So in our lab, we have a mandrel which the case goes on. You might have seen our original video showing that. Mm -hmm. And we're testing basically the surface of the brass into the uh, the neck. Okay. Now because um, you're tumbling and peening the outside of the, the, the skin of the brass to remove any contaminants and uh, that kind of stuff, it's actually work hardening the face, the, just the outside Just a face. little thin skin? Yes, yeah, so we actually wanted that question answered. So we took a whole sample of uh, stuff to our local lab down the road and he actually cross-sectioned them. And uh, so we had uh, before, so this one you know, wasn't, for example, uh, stainless steel tumbled and right. this one was and he did both in the same you know you might if you're on our Facebook page you'll actually see all of these photos that we've done with our testing nice. and in fact on our website there's an articles tab under media and that has all of the um, articles that we've written on the subject so he cross-sectioned them and he measured them inside the actual uh, body of the brass instead of just on the surface and we would we discovered that it's just a skin surface condition tumbling okay. in steel doesn't increase the hardness so we used to actually say you should start you should uh, stainless steel clean before annealing mm -hmm. now we do, it doesn't matter doesn't matter no you can do it whenever so you want so it won't affect accuracy it won't affect no the we, well, it, process what, what we can't say see accuracy in terms of on target is the shooter's responsibility i should say consistency yeah consistency yeah, right that's what i should say right so we actually um 
we don't do target shooting ourselves. Our job is to give you perfect annealed brass every time. That's why we rely on our customers to give us the feedback on target, you know, what's okay. actually working there. And uh, we've got some of our guys who uh, have our machine who are reporting extreme spreads smaller than a lot of guys standard DVA. In fact, one guy, wow. one guy at the show this week, he actually came to us and he said, hey, I've got a t-shirt, I made my t-shirt up, he's an amp customer, and he said, uh, my t-shirt says when I go to matches, my, my extreme spread is smaller than your standard deviation. <laughs> uh, so, so we get guys who, uh, one guy turned up at the show uh, yesterday actually, he had his uh, picture of his lab radar, and he said, my extreme spread is three, and my standard deviation is 1.5. Holy and uh, he, he's done that working out, like he used, he's got pretty good brass, this guy, and he was saying how annealing Obviously. changed it. Really? Yeah. I've never seen numbers like that on my chronograph. So it's a, annealing won't give you perfect results unless you do a lot of other good things beforehand. And so what we've noticed is the top shooters who own our machine, they do a lot of prep and a lot of work on their loads and their brass before annealing makes a difference. Yep. Like batch sorting, they do all the work on, they do all the, you know, neck turning if applicable. Oh, that's one thing I forgot to mention. The Aztec mode will account for changes in neck thickness if you neck turn. It'll account for different brands. Oh. Let's just say it's the one case you're dealing with. Right. So it'll work out regardless of brand. It'll work out regardless of the lot number. It'll work out regardless of if you've neck turned or not. Sweet. So. Now, so fast. Yeah, so what I have to point out as well, the Aztec mode is optional software. It's okay. an additional software package. Okay. So the machine comes out with the standard software loaded as well. In fact, new machines will have the Aztec software preloaded and you just have to unlock it. Understood. Yeah, it's just, with, okay. you'll see the Aztec there and you, if, you, if you click it, there'll be like a key that you have to apply. So both softwares will be preloaded from factory. Um, you basically you choose which software you want to run when you turn the machine on. Sure. And of course, the auto feeder will be. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about the auto feeder. Uh, that's, actually, that's, that's going to work. interesting. Yeah, I'm, it I'm sure. Like that. Man, the amount of people who are just win, win, win. Right. I can say right. April. <laughs> we're waiting on the circuit boards. All the bits are made. You know, we, we just got to order the motors. That's pretty fast. Uh, it'll be soon. In fact, this is acrylic. It's going to look slightly different. Uh, it's going to be polycarbonate, so a lot stronger. Uh, these parts here where you see the black bit, that's going to be uh, one piece. Okay. And uh, this part here is going to be all white. All right. Because uh, that's a... That's a uh, this is pretty much a prototype then? This is a pro... In fact, it's pretty annoying because we gave all the good prototypes to our distributors. <laughs> of this one here has a little bug on it. Um, for some reason it stops in the feed, but it's just okay. this one. Um, yeah, so April is when we're thinking of getting this out. Uh, <clears throat> essentially how this will work is it's plug and play. It's out of the box like this as you see it. You're going to use your normal a USB cable that comes with your machine. Essentially, if you don't, if you've lost it, whatever, you can, these are pretty cheap. I mean, it's a USB A and B mail. Okay. So if you do, you know, uh, and you just plug that in to the um, port and these two will talk to each other. And the software for the auto feeder is gonna be coming out soon. That's complimentary, obviously. In fact, um, we're gonna be releasing a small um, firmware patch for the standard software, which will also enable uh, the, programs up to 160 for the Winchester Super Short family, uh, but also we'll probably put the um, uh, the uh, auto feeder, this is called the Amp Mate by the way. Oh, okay. Amp Mate, so okay. it mates the machine and uh, basically it's been my project and dad, my, my Alex who's my father, we're right. father and son team, he said I call you mate so you know that's why we're going <laughs> to. Okay, fair so, enough. Yeah, fair Australians, enough. right. Well, we have a lot of high volume reloaders here in America, so yeah, I can see this being very We had a guy popular. who um, uh, basically has about 10 or so Dillons and a couple of, uh, he mm -hmm. said, I've already got my amp there with the Dillon there and I'm missing this bit. <laughs> he's and, ready. And you know, I want, and he's, he showed me a photo of all the buckets of two to three he wants to do, so. Um, this thing, by the way, has done 100,000 cycles since wow. we've had it. And oh, so this gear, uh, there's a brass gear on the motor there, and this is a this particular one is a Seetle. So uh, the guys at the um, the injection moulding say that the polycarb, that the specific type of polycarb they're using, is stronger than that again. But what we'll offer is um, we will do replacement parts. So okay. you know, yeah. if, if you yeah. have like this for you know two years, and if it does uh, break, they get you know, well, it's mechanical. The possibilities yeah. always. And the, these replacement parts will be ultra cheap. You know, we aren't going to. 
it'll, they'll be available. Excellent. You know, all of this is modular, so you know, whatever it is mechanical. So as you can appreciate, there will be bits that wear um, over the years, and we will make available those spare parts. And it's relatively simple to put together. Okay. It's just nuts and bolts. Do you have a lot of people wanting to anneal uh, handgun brass? We did a lot of work with that. Uh, so the problem with handgun brass... We have a lot of high volume shooters shooting handgun brass. Yeah, so we, the pilots here uh, are essentially, uh, that face there mm -hmm. is just a little, maybe about that far above the air gap of the, yeah. of the thing. Uh, so, and the problem is your shell holder right. to go in there is very close to the dot. So a the, nine millimeter would come up pretty short. Oh, we, we've done some tests. We, we made some pilots which were counterboard quite deep and the problem is it was very hard to get because the aluminium pilot became so thin it was almost dangerous uh, and we had a lot of guys say look um, for for what it is it's not worth it that was the feedback we got from customers we tried uh, basically we can anneal any cartridge in or case in here as long as it's an inch and a quarter long inch and a quarter yes yeah, so okay. pistol cartridges are fine as long as they're you know handgun stuff for example is probably okay uh, but that's where we draw the line understood understood this will anneal this particular unit here will anneal anything from 17 on all the way up to your che tax and uh, this particular one won't do 50 cal but we're releasing that really soon that's expensive brass too that'd be good oh yeah we're very good we've had the guys in our booth already and they're pretty keen to get sorted on that so so if you get one of these and say you buy a thousand rounds of brass Right. you kneel them right off the bat before you even load them? Um, we recommend annealing before every firing. Okay. So, you well, you've probably tested a lot of brass. Is it consistent enough as it comes from the factory is probably my question. Yes, it is, but some brands are different to others in terms of starting hardness. What we yeah. can tell you is, if you, say if I took this case here, and annealed it, this one's been annealed. Right. right, so let's just say that's factory brass. If I annealed it again, it's not gonna go softer, True. unless it's harder than our target harvest, right? right? So uh, it won't affect the quality at all. Um, what it will do is if it is slightly harder, it will bring it back down to a level. So I guess you could say, yes, uh, that would be a good thing, but it's not necessary. What we do say is anneal every reload. Right. Okay. Because what we know is every reload increases the hardness gradually. It does. And what we're trying to do is be consistent. So annealing should just be part of your normal procedure. Right. Between the firing and then the resizing and if you're dragging over an expander ball, that all works that brass pretty hard. Mm. So we actually uh, also say anneal before sizing. Okay. Because okay. if you anneal after, uh, what you're trying to do is get a consistent force in your die. Right. Right. So you get it, you get it soft put it in your die, it's going to conform well. Right, it's going to yeah. be concentric. Yeah. Wow, there's a lot to that. And, uh, oh, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, so when you buy these, they come with a one-year warranty, yes, but the, this, that one-year warranty was envisaged when we first started. Okay. We've had guys who've had these for three years, running them every day, and I mean, one guy had that exact uh, scenario, and he said it's still going strong. Um, but the, the reality is, if you have a breakdown with your unit and it's after the warranty, we will help. We're going to make you happy, right? right. We want to make customers happy, so uh, the support will remain. It's not like it goes out of warranty and then, oh, now nice, see you later, buy the new machine. We will uh, endeavour to keep our customers happy, uh, no matter the issue. So what you've got here is you've got a machine that turns your workshop into a small ammunition lab, where you can analyze the case, you can determine how hard it needs to be. You can do your setting and turn out every case the same as the last one. The right. whole batch will be consistent. Right, so with Aztec mode, you've got the lab in a box. Our yeah. lab becomes in here for you. Yeah. All the research we've done in the last two years, uh, we've, we've, we've get, basically generated an algorithm, if you will, that's inside that software and applied it to <clears throat> the analysis function. And so, yeah, basically, it's like Alex or I sitting at the lab for you and saying, right. that's the setting, it'll do that for you. Right. Uh, it's optional. It'll always be optional. So basically, any new machine, uh, it won't affect the price of the, the standard unit. Uh, it'll be an optional extra. Wow. So if you're loading good brass with premium bullets, why wouldn't you anneal every case? Because you want everyone exactly the same. 
Yeah. Just like, you know, the big guys do. Black Hills, uh, all the factories, when they load their brass, everyone's the same coming off the line. Absolutely. So that's why you, well, at least within that lot. Mm. So you can do the same thing at home now. Essentially, and then, yeah. And now we got rifles that can take advantage of that. We've got a lot, a lot of long range rifle interest here, as you well know. Mm. Um, even more so in the last couple of years, all these precision rifles coming out. Now you've got a rifle out of the box that can take advantage of good brass, good bullets. Mm. If you've got a good shooter behind it with the proper optic, a thousand yards. Mm. People are doing things at a thousand yards that were only dreamt of years ago. Yeah, so you take that first time you've shot that load and you've got pretty good accuracy out of it and then you go back and do it again and reload without annealing, you enter in the data and find yourself going over the top. Yep. Probably because you're shooting faster because the neck tension is right. increased. So annealing will make it, in theory, sure. you know, with everything else being good, spot well, on. Well, if you're shooting the same load and you're annealing every time with this, with the same brass, mm. there's no excuse for being off the target. And it's so simple. I mean, like, we had our, our, our um, code in there before. Um, I actually can't remember. I didn't write it down. But, uh, you know, to go back, so you've got your code, I want to go annealing, right? So how fast is it to set up? Well, you know, you go into run, enter the code, that takes roughly three seconds, uh -huh. and then you're ready to go, and you enter your pilot. That's how fast it is to set up for annealing now. And then, of course, away you go. So there is no, you know, unless you are doing it for the first time on that batch where you have to do the analysis, right. you just saw how fast that was. I did. We had a, did. From, from a brand new case to, uh, having a result that we can now anneal with, that was about 10 seconds. And then the process itself after that, oh, I yeah, mean, I, and for the volume I reload, I don't need the case feeder. I'm fine doing a couple hundred rounds at a time. That's, that's usually my max. So I pop them in, pop them out. That works great for me. Right. But I, I have friends that reload buckets full, and they would want that, that feeder set up with their Dillon hopper or their Hornady hopper. I mean, right. that's great that you were able to integrate an existing system into your feeder. We initially, when we designed the auto feeder, this took a lot of uh, a lot of work to do. In fact, I want to say to Blender Design in New Zealand, actually, who worked with us, they got us the basic ch uh, mechanical chassis, mm -hmm. as you see, and we, play, we we basically brought it back to our lab and we did all the final tweaking to get it working. So, good job, you guys. <laughs> we did nice initially, job. actually, uh, envisage having a hopper, but we decided that a lot of guys already have them. They're exactly. on the market. Why exactly. compete? Just you know, go buy a Dylan or a Hornady yeah. or no basically anything that them. you can make your own homemade thing. As long as it'll feed the case base first or head first into that tube, right? It'll work. And you could sit there with a bowl and just pop them in one at a time if you wanted to. Well, that's what I've been doing all yeah. show because I actually have a Dylan case feeder here, but it's 220 volt. Okay. And okay. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> no one has an inverter, so I couldn't. <laughs> It'd be nice if I could show it running here, but uh, yeah. Yeah, but you can just pop them in the top and pretty and much. Go. Yeah, I've, well, got a, I've got a bullet feeder that works that way too. Oh, and reloader. just also while I'm mentioning that, you'll, you'll also get two of these feeding tubes. Okay. And just like this tube, you want to use the uh, smallest one cap possible to fit the the cartridge through. All right. right. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Anything else you got to show us? Um, I think that's pretty much it. Wow, we covered a lot of ground. Well, I think we did. I learned a lot. <laughs> I'm always learning. Matt. Thanks a million for coming by. See? Thanks for making the trip from New Zealand. Oh, it's, we it's, appreciate it. I love this place. <laughs> Brownells have been selling the heck out of these machines. It amazed me the quantities we're moving right now. Really? I thought a high priced machine like that wouldn't sell. People can't get enough of them. As we've had more customers, we found that more and more people are opening up to the idea that, hey, an expensive uh, piece of kit like this, it is expensive compared yes, is. to anything else you can buy, but the, with the customers that we've had initially saying, reporting the results a lot of other guys are saying well at, you know hey it's probably worth it right you're buying consistency and you made it so easy you can anneal everything you know yeah. all your rifle cases easily if and you know we're always uh, open to any shooter who has our machine saying I've discovered this you know this is what I'm finding that's what makes us tick you know we love to hear feedback from customers using our machine saying I'm getting problems here this is what I'm doing what do you guys think and then we've got like a little back and forth community in a way because we can say, oh, this guy, not naming names, we don't want to do that. But, you know, we've, our guys are saying, this is probably what you want to try. 
and then okay. you know so we've got a little bit of There's that some going support on there oh yeah we support supports our thing we love to and instructions uh, for the machine yeah so it's online as well but you've got a little manual that comes with the machine okay because there are a few steps that have to be followed you know yeah it's very all carefully. it's all a color manual okay. uh, nice. and essentially you know any problems just email us I mean Good. we're a phone we're an email a phone call away so good machine good support man thanks again we really enjoyed it pleasure thanks man and thanks to you for watching we'll be back a little later from shot show live here at the brownells booth until then bye for now